the Cody Gabko hijack looks like has gotten another gear and obviously it's being orchestrated by Real Madrid because they're really having problems with their center forward in the side of their team as they go on and face Liverpool in the knockout stages of the Champions League which is known as the round of 16. Then we are talking about Casemiro, a player that loves playing at Manchester United Real Madrid players, we are pissed off to see him leave their club and obviously the manager, sorry, the management of United has finally revealed the reason as to why they signed him at Manchester United, how they went on to make a decision to spend £70 million on a player who is 30 years of age and they awarded him with a five-year contract where he's earning close to £370,000 a week. Welcome to United Matters channel. Guys, how are you and where are you watching us from? Rocket David is my name, second video of the day. The first video was all about the manager Eric Ten Hag confirming or approving the new contract of Marcus Rashford. He wants him at Manchester United for the next next seven or ten years until when he feels I cannot play ball any further at a club which goes by the names of Manchester United. Guys, you know, we hit 9,100 9, subscribers and let's continue subscribing to this channel. I want us to hit 10,000 subscribers before the end of this 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 month and this year or 2023 because as I look at things, if we move on to subscribers or subscribing, in around 20th, would have hit 10,000 subscribers because I believe we are getting very many subscribers in lately and it's courtesy of you people who really love this channel and thank you for keeping it United Matters channel always. Cody Gapko has been action today. He just got involved in one goal, but he never put in an assist. He created what we call a secondary assist. In the first goal that Netherlands scored against 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 USA, he passed that ball to Dema Freeze and Dema Freeze did a cut back cross towards the edge of the teenage box area that formed Memphis Depay, formal of Manchester United, and hit it at the back of the net to make it one nil for side which goes by the names of for side which goes by the names of Netherlands. And he had some other cut back into the box, though he Netherlands lacked numbers, but he had led the line very well. And one thing I liked about him is that he has a very decent holder play. Talk of players who really have a very decent holder play. This is the guy, and he goes by the names of Cody Gapko. He's really great, and he has gone ahead to improve his game a lot nowadays. And lately, he's really one of those that very many big teams are really scouting. United is scouting him, Bayern Munich is scouting him, Arsenal, Chelsea, Liverpool, and Real Madrid. Close to 10 top tier teams are scouting this guy in the names of Cody Gapko and it looks like the highest bid now is going to take this in there for you because a bidding war is going to be created in between these two teams all these very many teams that really want Cody Gapko. Now today the Mira have gone ahead to let us know that Real Madrid are looking for reinforcements following the injury suffered by Karim Benzema on the eve of the World Cup. Gabriel Jesus Cody Gapko and Richardson are being tracked by the club. Now, this is where it comes in and the hijack might happen. Why is it a hijack? You see, we call it a hijack even when you've been in the front seat of the transfer and then a team comes in and really takes over. You've seen very many hijacks coming in through. You saw the hijack of Rafinha at Manchester United. You've seen the hijacks of Frank Ribery by Chelsea, Mike Sien by Chelsea, uh, Jono B. Mikel by Chelsea. Uh, Ronaldinho by Barcelona hijacked because they hijacked him from Manchester United. United didn't want to pay the amount of money that was being requested. They wanted to pay five million pounds, and PSG wanted twelve million pounds. Barcelona came in through and paid that money. Then they took this guy. But if at all Ferguson had agreed to pay twelve million pounds, he would have really gotten this player early enough, and the hijack couldn't have happened. And he learned a lesson from that because even they told him that Ronaldo, you're going to pay twelve million pounds by then, two thousand and three, for Cristiano Ronaldo. He said, all right, let me pay that money and add-ons that accumulated close to 20 million pounds. He said, let me pay that man amount of money immediately because Arsenal were the first one to go on and do this. And United did a hijack on, on, on Arsenal, on Ronaldo, because Ronaldo was being scouted by Arsene Wenger first and he didn't want to pay that 12 million pounds. Then United went in through and hijacked that player. And very many other players have been hijacked. Michael Carrick, mm, Dimitar Babatov, Tevez Carlos, very many players have been hijacked by Manchester United and brought in at the club of Manchester United. Even Lisandro Martinez was just hijacked from a team which goes by the names of P from a team which goes by the name of Ajax. 
Arsenal were leading conversation. They started conversation. They started, they started the conversation to sign Lisandro Martinez last year in December, and they had the paperwork done. But United came in through and hijacked the player because Eric Ten Hag was the former the former manager of Ajax, and he knew Lisandro Martinez, and we did a hijack. The recent hijack we've done, even that of Tarell Malasia, it was a hijack because Tarell Malasia had even accomplished everything and the medical was pending to go and join Olympic Marseille down in France. But there was a bridge of just 1 million euro and United came in through and paid 15 million euros to sign the player in the names of Tarell Malassia. And that was a super hijack because even Fabrizio Romano had already put out a here we go that Tarell Malassia from Feyenoord to Olympic Marseille is a here we go so that was a magnificent hijack and now when i'm talking about a hijack of Cody Gapko, you can understand where i'm reflecting or mirroring this from here onto united matters channel and real madrid is the team planting a hijack of Cody Gapko from psv to madrid and united have been leading this for a very long time if you didn't know, in the summer, United had been talking to Cody Gapko and his agent. They had, they had agreed personal terms. Even with PSV, they had agreed the amount of money to pay. They required 40 million pounds or 52 million euros that was required to sign this player, Cody Gapko. United thought that when they go to Ajax, they would have really, Ajax would go on and say, all right, give us 60 million pounds then the balance of 25 would have been used to go on and really make a top up to the amount of money they are left with to sign cody gapko guess what happened ajax clinged on the 85 million pounds and they said we want that amount of money here at ajax they got it in meaning that united was left with nothing to sign cody gapko and that's why cody gapko never came to manchester united he also came out in an interview and said i talked to eric ten Hag." I was so close to joining Manchester United, but because of the amount of money they bought Anthony on, I couldn't make it out to a side which goes by the names of Manchester United. So means United are in the front seat of signing this player. Ten Hag has convinced the club, and lucky enough, the performance of Cody Gapko has been so much evident at the World Cup and so much calling to see to it that he comes in and does a very good job at Manchester United. Three goals in four games. At the World Cup, even today, however much, he never really put in a goal or an assist, but he played very well, leading that line, doing that hold-up play. He is fast. His physicality is not questioned. I like his composure, his patience, and obviously going in for a quick pass most of the times when it's required for, and his football intelligence is way above the ordinary, and his seeding is way up there, and is a player I would like to see come at Manchester United. But the coming of, by the coming in of Real Madrid, changes what we call the dimensions of this transfer. How does it change the dimensions of this transfer? Real Madrid, in their pocket, they already have 70 million pounds from Manchester United. Who did they sell? They sold Casemiro to Manchester United. Out of that, only 40 is needed by, by PSV to get this player out of the club. And obviously, Real Madrid is a very good flower that attracts bees of any kind. And as I told you that, the game of transfer is like a pollination system because beautiful flowers attract bees to pollinate them. You get? And when they pollinate, the bees get away with the grains and obviously the flowers, they, they got they pollinate the pollen grains and then they get what we call honey. Those are the bees and obviously the flowers or the pollen grains blossom and turn into flowers and they are beautiful, beautiful flowers. So that's the game of transfer. It's like scratch my back, scratch your back and how attractive you are. For Cody Gapko, he has put out his attractions. He has put out his assets on the market and now he's attractive. Real Madrid are the reigning champions of the UEFA Champions League and obviously they are a team that very many players do go sorry want to go in and sign sorry and play for and they are having an agency of the injury of Karim Benzema at the club he went to the World Cup not injured and then sustained another injury meaning that every one month or two weeks this guy gets an injury that is not good news to Carlo Ancelotti and his bosses at Real Madrid so they need to go out and find out a player that should replace him but among the replacements mentioned Gabriel Jesus from Arsenal, he cannot leave, you know that very well. 
Richardson at Tottenham Hotspur, he cannot leave, you know that very well. And obviously another one is Cody Gapko. For him, he's ready to move. But Real Madrid coming in to hijack this deal makes it hard for United to make. How? In terms of money. Gapko would love to come to play at Manchester United and if at all is going to advise him, he'll tell him, please, I also admire to go to Manchester United to play there. You know that very well. I went there, they waited for me when I had that knee injury and they signed me. Salix Ferguson took me to the club of Manchester United and I did a very wonderful job there. But I used that as my path to Real Madrid. I went there, was it in 2000? I played some good five, six seasons. Then I went to Real Madrid. So the best thing for you to do, go to Real Madrid. Sorry, first go to Manchester United, prove yourself and then go ahead and go to Real Madrid and they will take you when you are really a player who can put your terms of negotiations onto the table because right now Cody Gapko cannot put his terms of negotiations on the table that I want to play every game if at all I'm fit and so many and so on and so forth so those are the calls that you have to make if at all you are supposed to go on and be successful at Real Madrid because Madrid has players who put clauses in their contract that I have to play every game you get, if at all I'm fit, or 90% of the games a season. So, Cody Gabko needs to put that in mind. But I believe Ruth Van Nistel is going to give him good advice and is going to follow it up to come in and really do a very good job at Manchester United. But I believe this guy is really good. He has attracted very many good teams. And a hijack is expected from Real Madrid because Real Madrid are good at doing business. Let me tell you, Real Madrid signed Ronaldo in 2018. Ronaldo spent one more season at Manchester United when he's a Madrid player. You get? When he signed a pre-contract. You get? They wanted to sign Kylian Mbappe. Though the French, the French president came in through and intervened, but the player was going. And Kylian Mbappe said what rigid him from going to Real Madrid was because the manager intervened. You see? Chiomini joined them immediately after them winning what we call the Champions League. They signed him immediately. So... Madrid is really a very good club at doing transfers. They are having a very good negotiating team and they don't take long. You see, if Madrid comes out officially and enters this war of Cody Gapko, trust me, within one week after the World Cup, they would have signed him. Remember in 2014, they signed Hamis Rodriguez from the World Cup. He was still playing at the World Cup. They agreed personal terms and his agent. They agreed a fee with Monaco. And even before the World Cup came to a halt and his team was knocked out, this player was already a Real Madrid player. They've been doing such deals. And you never know, Madrid can go out down in Qatar, negotiate with the agent of Cody Capco, talk to PSV, and hand in the money when United is still looking for money to come out and pay. Because we know it's really going to be hard for us to spend a lot of money this January winter transfer window. Reason being, it was unplanned for. That's it. So that's what is happening at a team which goes by names of Manchester United with the possible hijack of Cody Gapko by Real Madrid. Now after that, Fabricio Roman also came out and told us that it's true that Real Madrid are following Cody Gapko. They've scouted him multiple times. So it shows you how huge this is and the hijack is really going to happen any time from now. Now let's talk about let's talk, let's talk a little bit about Casemiro from the Athletic. They are telling us that Casemiro loves playing in England and he loves playing for United. Obviously, he needed a new challenge, and that new challenge has always been playing for team which goes by the names of Manchester United, and he is feeling at home. He has fitted into the team very well and is putting in loads of performances that are really unforgettable. Like that goal he really scored against Chelsea, that header. I call it the magical header in the dying minutes because the way he really headed that ball and how Kepa as a Balaga tried to get it off the line and he had crossed the line. Obviously, he put in a very wonderful performance and that is a player who goes by names of Casemiro. Now, we are having Andy Mitin. He has told us that Man United have been tracking Casemiro for a long time because he fitted the profile of a defensive midfielder. They also had different profiles in terms of how Eric Ten Hag wanted to play. This came about through casts at the hotel near Schiphol Airport in spring of 2022. Let United not come out here and lie as they've been following Casemiro. And in the number, in the days I've seen United scouting players, they've never scouted Casemiro. Casemiro came up as an option when Ten Hag said, I want a CDM. 
and they told him and they really went to the market and talked to agents and agents told them that Casemiro would love to end his career at Real Madrid that's it but United has not has not been tracking Casemiro for so long I don't remember in the past four or five years a story coming out that United is scouting Casemiro no way the players have been scouting that play in the midfield we had Milokovic Savage there has been Lekran Rice uh, Calvin Phillips Ruben Neves um, Chiomini he was talked about I think two seasons back Fabinho was one of those players that United were interested in uh, Thomas Partey was once linked to Manchester United um, which other player Klamoglu, or Kalmoglu was also once linked to Manchester United um, I've never had a story of us being of us being linked to Casemiro but this came about because the Dijon deal had failed United went in for Rabio and the Rabio deal failed and obviously they had to find a solution because they knew that Casemiro wanted to move in the summer they knew that they knew that they got to know about it in the summer and his agent was looking for a better team for him because he thought that the his his journey at Real Madrid had to end and he tries to try out a new career and secondly the coming in of a younger Chiomini at Real Madrid was like a signal to Casemiro that your days are coming to an end at Real Madrid and you have to prepare yourself to say to it that you don't at any time not feel at home and you need to leave and pack your bags and leave the club of Real Madrid. So he knew that he knew this and he did it in time and United went in for him. But they knew he was available but he was expensive. That's it. That's why they were waiting for Rabio. But obviously they ended up bringing him in at Manchester United because Rabio deal failed and he was really doing a very very wonderful job at the club which goes by the names of Real Madrid so I go ahead and rubbish that story that United have been scouting Casemiro for long no no because United on the list of players they had even before Ten Hag came in here Casemiro was not there they are looking at Declan Rice Calvin Phillips and Ruben Neves and maybe Yefis Besuma, four central defensive midfielders were on the list of United. Casemiro was not among. Even when Ten Hag came in here, he wanted Frankie De Jong in that midfield area. That's the player he wanted. He never wanted Casemiro. But Casemiro came in because we failed to land that deal of De Jong. And obviously, we had to go in and bring in a player who can come in and get that job done. So that's why things happen that way. So let no one lie to you that it's really. It was a deal. It was a player that being scouted United for a very long time. That's a lie. Now Andy Mutin is telling us that Real Madrid's players were not happy when they heard Casemiro was being linked with a move away. When they realized he was set to join United, a group of senior players went to see Carlo Ancelotti and got straight to the point that Madrid cannot let him go. So obviously, Casemiro has been the glue to most of the things that Real Madrid has gone ahead to win. If you, if you watch that finale of Liverpool and Real Madrid or the Champions League that happened out in Paris, you are going to come out and agree with me. The interceptions he made, the way he won the midfield battle because Liverpool was, was forced to play wide, you get, using those wide areas and he stopped Fabinho, Thiago Alcantara and, uh, and Jordan Henderson to play in that midfield area. He stopped them completely and he shielded the back foot to an extent that they even kept a clean sheet amidst Fubo Kotwa being one of the best goalkeepers of the day when he really pulled up close to nine shots on target and five of those were from Mosala and he pulled up fantastic fantastic saves to late Madrid beat beat Liverpool by one goal to nil so Casemiro has been integral in this game of football but one thing they had not known is that he's 30 years of age they have brought in a younger player at 80 million euros what comes into your head it's simple that you are not going to be played. That the season is going to start, but most of the games you're not going to get enough playing time. So what Casemiro need, what what Casemiro needed was to go out and find a club that would play him because the World Cup was around the corner and would have affected his World Cup at Brazil. So the first game they played was it against Maraga. He came off the bench and played like 20 minutes because Chiomini played like 70. They took him off and brought in Casemiro. So Casemiro got to know, oh, looks like I'm not going to be playing regularly here yet I want to be a regular player so he opted to go to Manchester United and the players of Real Madrid were pissed because they know the part he plays in the dressing room and him being a very professional and confident player who listens to the coach and manager they never wanted him to leave the club so guys thank you very much for watching in tell me what you think about the 
Cody Gopko hijack, Casimiro United love, and how the players never wanted to go. And tell me what you think about everything we've talked about because I've talked about a lot. So tell me what you think about everything we discussed on this channel and go in the right bottom corner, smash the subscription button and hit the notification bell that whenever you get notified every time I upload a video onto this channel. I sign up for now. See you later. I cover you all the blood of Jesus Christ right now. Argentina has scored the second goal and that is Julian Alves from Man City. It's 2 nil for Argentina and obviously we're waiting for VAR to see whether this goal is going to be counted or not. But very big mess from the goalkeeper and obviously it's 2 nil for Argentina. I'm out.